Madame, Monsieur, chers parents, bonsoir. Madame, sir, dear parents, good evening. Thank you for joining this webinar. We're happy to be here at our Tsunkwano campus for this event. I am Guillaume Goriot. I am the board chair of FIS. I have been in this position since November 2019. And how is me tonight, Miss Catherine Yu, FIS Finance and General Service Director. Good evening, Catherine. Miss Caroline Simon-Michel. Caroline is chair of the Governance Committee. Good evening, Caroline. Miss Sonia Pernadargut. Sonia is the board secretary, and she's also the chair of the Audit Committee. Good evening, Sonia. With us as well, uh, Mr. Goran Kuna. Goran is uh, the FIS board vice chair, and he is also the board, uh, the um, committee chair of the search committee and the compensation and benefit committee. Good evening, Goran. And uh, Mr. Thomas de Couvlar. Uh, Thomas de Couvlar is uh, FIS board treasurer. Good evening, Thomas. Before uh, presenting the agenda for this evening, um, uh, I would like to remind you um, what the board is and what is the board role. The core of the commitment we take as a director is to make sure that the long-term sustainability of the school uh, um, is secured. We must ensure that the school will be able to operate for future generations. In order to fulfill this mission, uh, the board is responsible, is responsible for the school alignment with the article of association. And for this, we refer on two main uh, topics and, and documents, which are firstly uh, the vision. The vision has been developed and, and largely revamped uh, last year, and it's, and it's still promoted right now. And the strategic plan. The strategic plan is made uh, by the board. Um, it starts from, uh, from the vision and the mission statement. And the strategic plan will help the head of school to develop the school plan, or what we call in French, the projet d'établissement. So the board is also responsible for the finance stability and the budget of our school. And also, uh, under the partnership framework, uh, responsible of the recruitment and the management of, uh, of, of the school top management. So our board, uh, the, the, this current board, is not, uh, has no operating role. And most of the time, making decisions, the board uh, looks five years ahead. For the composition of the board, we are a group of 12 parents volunteer elected, uh, uh, plus a permanent voting seat uh, that we have for the Consul General de France à Hong Kong et Macao. Um, the, the, the board work is organized in uh, several committees, uh, uh, five permanent committees that you can see on your screen, the long-term strategic planning, the audit committee, the, um, not the HR committee, but it's the compensation and benefits committee, the finance committee, and the governance committee. So those committees are uh, fully aligned with what I've just said regarding the mission of the board. And we also have two ad hoc committees, so which are not long-standing. Uh, we have the search committee for the next head of school. Uh, you had uh, several communication on this, on this topic. And also the fundraising committee. The board is supporting the fundraising uh, currently. Um, so this committee, they include uh, obviously board members and uh, school manager and also some uh, other uh, skilled volunteers from our community. Uh, this said, it allows me to uh, go back to the agenda for tonight. Uh, so the agenda for tonight, we will, uh, um, shortly after this, uh, this, this first word, um, talk about the financial situation of our school uh, currently for 2021 and uh, talk about the budget preparation for 21-22. Uh, we will, uh, let, so this will be um, Catherine and, uh, and Thomas. Uh, we will then go to the governance reform with Caroline. Uh, you will have a comprehensive update on the committee's work um, made by um, Sonia and Goran. 
and um, finally uh, we will move to our uh, Q&A session. For the Q&A session, if you have any question, you can simply type them and post them from the window on the right of your screen. Um, we will try to answer as many questions as possible. Um, I guess there is many um, questions from the, about the finance. So I suggest that you wait until we've been through the presentation uh, to, po to post your question because you will probably find uh, maybe answer in, in, in uh, Thomas and, um, and Catherine's presentation. Um, also, um, please take note that it's, it, is a, um, it is a board webinar, so um, we are um, keen to talk about uh, any topics, but uh, most uh, we, we prefer the related board um, uh, topics, and we may not be able to answer all operating uh, questions uh, regarding uh, the the school management, but uh, we will try. So I would like uh, to take a minute to come back on uh, our school. Um, FIS is quite unique and it's quite complex as an organization. I remember this sentence from uh, Mr. Bouchard, who was the former director of the AOF firm, and he said during his last visit, uh, um, FIS is the most difficult school to manage among, among the 500 schools of the network. So why? Uh, because FIS operates two stream on four campuses with many interaction between all of them. So a kind of few examples, uh, teachers from uh, BPR are also working on, um, on Tsonquano. Tsonquano is operating both primary and uh, primary French stream and international stream and, uh, and secondary French stream. Um, students who have uh, uh, sports in BPR sometimes go to Jardines etc etc uh, so any change in our organization has always a big impact and particularly uh, those required by edb under the the covid provision so regarding covid wh what is the situation currently fis is allowed to welcome uh, on a health day basis one third of the capacity of each campus morning only for primary morning or afternoon for secondary so this is what is currently in place uh, uh, with the non difference from one campus to another, from one campus, sorry, to another, taking into account that occupancy rate of each campus is not the same. After Chinese New Year, schools in Hong Kong were offered by the EDB the potential and divisive uh, option uh, of resuming full enrollment face to face classes, still on a half day basis, very important to underline this, on the condition that all staff are tested COVID 19 every 14 days. The head of school, uh, Mr. Francois Xavier, clearly stated his uh, support for this option on the 5th of March and the board supported him. Unfortunately, the COVID cases in San Quano and the quick outbreak uh, within international school defer this implementation. So what would be the situation from April uh, 15? S sorry. Thanks to um, the approval of the um, EDB uh, to distinguish here in San Quano primary and secondary as two uh, different schools, uh, we will be able to implement the test for the staff working on San Quano primary, but also on Jardines and Chaiwan. So it means that 100% of uh, FIS students in kindergarten and in primary classes will come back to school every day on a half-day basis from the 12th of April. TKO kindergarten and TKO primary classes will also benefit of an extra hour face-to-face. -face. Um, class will start at 8 in the morning and will stop at 1 p.m. To make this work with the secondary and the buses organization, there is an additional expense on regular bus invoicing, but this amount, which is a half a million Hong Kong, uh, five, um, 500,000, is 100% covered uh, by the school, and uh, it, won't be, it won't appear in uh, any of uh, parent invoice, so completely covered by the school to make this uh, disposal work properly. Uh, for secondary, there is um, from student teach from students, from teacher, and from parents a strong will to safeguard exams. 
From April 12, the, the secondary of the two stream will remain in the one third format as uh, 100%, as one, sorry, as 100% on a half day basis uh, would not bring a significant difference. Um, at San Quano, um, at San Quano, considering secondary without primary, as I explained, the school is now uh, clearly divided. Uh, uh, this situation will allow benefit, beneficial improvement, and the situation will be the same in uh, Blue Pool Road when uh, the students from the international stream will start their, their exam. There will be significant improvement. Um, you also probably uh, read the news um, that there are rumors that uh, by tomorrow the EDB uh, may announce that um, there is a new um, change in the rules and we can go, it has to be confirmed, go up to uh, two-thirds of the, the capacity, uh, which will be another um, improvement for uh, welcoming all our students. Uh, I won't go in any further on this uh, as it be belongs to the school management. Um, uh, head of uh, campuses will come back to, to you with detail, and I encourage uh, for those who have questions to reach the, the, the parent reps uh, if uh, you have any question. It is acknowledged that we all suffered from COVID situation and, um, uh, and, and the impact of our, of our school in, uh, in Hong Kong. So the board unanimously uh, feels and shares uh, this suffering. Among students, all kindergarten children and primary st students of TKO have been the most deprived uh, of face-to-face -face teaching. So the following measures, uh, therefore, uh, uh, have been decided. Um, first of all, there will be no school fee increase for next year, this for all stream and uh, all classes. Uh, there will be uh, one-time specific grants for all MS, RC, and GS year one students in the same way as we did last year. And there will be a one-time specific grant for all Tsongkwano primary students, uh, which will come in addition of the, the grants uh, for uh, kindergarten. So Catherine Yu and Thomas uh, will uh, come back uh, to this with more detail in a minute. So in this context, um, we also decided to extend the deadline for notification of departure from, if you wish to, to if you will have to leave the, the FIS. So this date has been pushed until the 30th of uh, April. Um, one thing important here, it's only if your situation is uncertain, because it's very important for the school to know as soon as possible if you're leaving the school. It allows all the team, all the staff to organize uh, in a good functioning the, um, the back to school. Uh, the, the, the sooner we know how many kids, we, how many students we will have next year, the better it is for having recruitment and, and so on. Uh, and finally, on, on another note, I'd like to share this news as well that both FIS buses provider, Kung Chung and Yang Meili, confirm also today that they will not raise their fees uh, for next year. So without any delay, I suggest that we move to the, to the finance presentation. Managing the budget this year and, and planning for next year is, is a key. It hasn't been an easy job. Uh, Catherine and Thomas will take you through. Je vous souhaite à tous un très bon webinar. Merci de votre attention. Uh, thank you, uh, Guillaume. So, good uh, evening, everyone. I am Thomas de Couvlar, so I'm treasurer of the board. I'm here with uh, Catherine, as mentioned, who is the finance director of the school. So, moving on. So, Catherine and I will give you an update uh, on the financial situation of the school. So, I will uh, start uh, with uh, uh, details of what was uh, earlier announced by Guillaume on the school fee support. Uh, and as well uh, give elements on the use of government subsidies. Uh, you might rem remember that we received subsidies from the government of Hong Kong last year and this year. Then I will uh, pass the mic to Catherine, who will present the uh, financial situation of this school year, 2020 and 21, as well as introduce the budget for next year that has been voted. 
and I will conclude with uh, some uh, longer term perspective for the finance of the school. So starting with uh, what was uh, just announced by uh, Guillaume, the student grant. So the board has uh, decided to allocate 6.2 million of Hong Kong dollars to a specific group of students in, uh, two, uh, in, in, in two streams or two uh, announcements. So the first item is a one-time grant to all MSRC GS Year 1 classes. So it's very similar to last year. It's a 30% one-off reduction on term two school fee for MSRC and a 15% on um, term two school fees for GS year one. Both will be applied as a credit to uh, the term three invoice and the total cost for the school is uh, 3.8 million. The second item, which differs from last year, is a one-time grant to TKO kindergarten and primary students of 10% per student uh, that, is, that will be uh, uh, applied on uh, term two and uh, as well a credit to the term three invoice. And this one will, cost, will come as a cost of 2.4 million. So the, the, as I said, the first one is very similar. The second one is here as an acknowledgement that the situation of uh, TKO is very particular compared to the other campuses. Uh, we have a campus that has uh, less capacity uh, officially and as such has, has had a much stronger difficulty to uh, cope with the COVID situation in the, in the, past, uh, in the recent past. Now, we could uh, wonder, and we might have the question, uh, why not more? Uh, I, I want to remind here that the school is a non-profit, so the school uh, can uh, run a loss, but not forever, and not a, too big a loss. And you will see uh, in the presentation from Catherine for this year and next year that we are not particularly running a profit at the time. We are uh, actually uh, uh, accepting uh, to run a loss uh, this year, and we, accepted to, uh, uh, we accept to have a budget that is going to be negative next year, but uh, we cannot uh, uh, build a hole which is uh, too big. So my, the second part is uh, a question that many uh, have mentioned in the past, so we take this occasion to update you on that. It's the use of government subsidies. So if I, I will look at the two uh, items that are on the top of the slide. We have had two uh, subsidies, some for year 2019-20 and some uh, additional for year 2020-21. 2019-20 was a one-off 9 million Hong Kong uh, subsidy. And this year we've had uh, different items. We had a 9.2 original subsidy from the Hong Kong government that was uh, uh, reduced afterwards, so we had to give back uh, 0.4 of a million. And we had an additional uh, 0.5 of a million subsidy from AOFE. So all this has been allocated to uh, some specific spending which uh, are a mix of uh, loss of revenue. So typically, so I'm looking at the 2019-20 column. So we had loss on, uh, of revenue uh, in rental income for 1 million. We also had some budget for improvement, improvement in, uh, either in the class or in uh, different IT uh, uh, items. So it's it's a provision for 3 million, not completely consumed at this stage, but still we want to use those 3 millions for improvements, as well as uh, expenses related to COVID, uh, 1 million at the time. So it can be cleaning, it can be mask, it can be uh, uh, different products that are needed. And lastly, the rebate that we communicated for MSRC uh, GSCR1 last year for an amount of 3.6 that was taken out of this uh, uh, global subsidy from the Hong Kong government. This year, year 20, 2021, it's very uh, similar story. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll compensate the loss on venue rental, which are slightly bigger because of the longer uh, period, uh, period in COVID. Uh, we have more COVID uh, costs, testing, support, 
uh, extra bus arrangements that will be needed and have been needed for, for, for the, the specific arrangement of the school. And again, the rebate, we only allocate um, a portion of the rebate, so the one that is for MSRC and GSC one to the subsidies. The rest of the rebate, which is specific to TKO, will be uh, taken from reserves that we have specifically on the TKO uh, company, which is a, a different company, so it's not taken out of the rebate. So that's basically the plan. Uh, at the end of the day, all the rebates will be used uh, in a way or another for the benefit of, uh, of the kids. So I'll, uh, I'll pass over to Catherine for the update on the financial situation. Thank you, Thomas. Um, I would like to start by giving you an overview of FIS um, financial st status in the current year and then followed by the uh, explanation of the budget basis for next year. So despite the restriction imposed by Education Bureau, which have been impacted for all schools, so as FIS, we have executed our current budget plan. The current budget was originally budgeted as, 20, as a loss of 24 million. We are expecting as an improvement of 11 million. The net loss will reduce from 24 million to 13 million. The improvement of the result comes from combinations of factors. The first one is more students. We have more students than expected. We have budgeted a total of 2,640 students. Today, we are at 2,720. The higher student number brought an extra revenue of 7 million to the school. We believe this is due to the closure of the, of the border and we expect to receive more departures requests in the coming months. Second is the government support. During the year, we have received over 9 million subsidies from Hong Kong government and LFU. These subsidies have been and will continue to be used for the school development, given, to, given back to the parents and eventually benefit the student, as explained by Toma. However, these two improvements have been offset by the loss on extracurriculum revenue and also the venue, the venue hiring uh, revenue. As such, a net increase of 5 million in revenue is noted. In terms of the cost side, despite the increase in the COVID-related spending, we managed to save 1.8 million. Even we are operating um, in one third of our capacity, we do spend more in, in terms of the numbers of uh, part-time staff to ensure distance, social distancing and extra cleaning and additional sanitary products. There is also another saving of 2.7 million in the staff cost. This is mainly coming from the delay in hiring and the restructuring of the administration team. The overall EBITDA, that is the earnings before interest tax and depreciation, has improved by 9 million, reaching a level of 37 million. It is important to note that this, it is important for the school to maintain a healthy and positive EBITDA. Given the current situation, the EBITDA is considered as acceptable short term, but unsustainable in the long run. So Thomas will explain to you about the, our long term target in a minute. And overall for this year, the school will still suffer from a net loss of 30 million. So moving to next year, there are two main objectives when we prepare the budgets. First is to increase the student welfare. Um, second is to secure securing the financial situation of the school. These two objectives are to be achieved without school fee increase. In terms of increased student welfare, for primary, we are going to increase the in-class support by putting extra resources in language support for non-native French and non-native English speakers. We are also going to increase individualized teaching support with additional in-class teaching assistance. For secondary, we are increasing the guidance support for university placement in international destination for both streams. Apart from that, we are going to add an in-house psychologist to support our students who are in need. In terms of school facility, we will invest new classroom equipment in Jardins, Bupuro and, and Chaiwan. The current projector will be replaced with interactive TV um, and extended whiteboard. This will facilitate teaching and learning through digital media. 
We are also starting the renovation projects in Jardines Jard in Jardin and Bupuro campus from the summer. The second objective is to secure our financial position. This would be achieved with the expansion of student bases. We are adding extra classes and cohort starting this year. This addition of cohort will bring a positive long-term impact to the school. It also helps to prepare FIS for further drop in the student numbers. In the coming year, we are starting the three-year old classes in TKO. We are adding two more new international primary classes in Jardins. And with the growth from TKO cohort, we are adding a total number of five classes in the coming year. At the same time, we will continue all the cost control measure which is already in place and continue to explore further cost saving initiatives. It is also key for us to maintain a healthy cash position. We will execute interest-free loans from Hong Kong government by the end of the year. All of these objectives and additional services will be uh, achieved on the basis that no school fee will increase. So let's take a moment to look at our student number. Um, this is the chart that show our student number evolution since 2010. FIS experienced a steady growth from 2010 until 2018. In 2018, we have opened our TKO campus. This is a campus to accommodate 1,000 students. There was an expectation of increase in student number back then. However, you may see that from the chart, the growth of, uh, from 2018 did not happen. The student number pretty much stayed flat. If you further look at the split between the French stream and international stream, the French stream student have decreased since 2016, while the international stream student increased. For the coming year, we budget at a reasonably conservative level. Despite the opening of five classes, we are expecting a total number of students 2,730, which is the same level as today. We expect more departures to come from now until the end of September, and, and with the increase in uh, competition of uh, the international school in Hong Kong, we budget for a flat you know, level of students. To give you an idea, if there's no departure, we should have reached about 2,800 students. So what would be the overall financial situation for next year based on 2,700 students? Compared to this year, we budget a loss of 22 million next year. The overall revenue will increase with the five extra classes. We also expect a progressive recovery of extracurriculum income and venue rental as we assume the school will reopen. Thus, the overall income will improve by 60 million. However, the operating costs will also increase by 7 million due to the full resumption of the school. We will have more trip expenses, expenses incurred from the ongoing COVID implementation measures. There will be also an increase in the staff costs of 4 million, which mainly coming from the new opening of, class, opening of the new classes. As a whole, the school will result with a positive EBITDA of 32 million and a net loss of 22 million. Given the situation, um, EBITDA is again considered as short-term acceptable, but non long-term unsustainable. Um, so this is a summary of the overall picture for next year, and I pass the time to Thomas. Thank you, Catherine. So very quickly on the long-term uh, financial trajectory of the school. I need the slide. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, uh, how do you read this? So we have two plans. We have a five-year plan and a 10-year plan. Here we are showing the, the five-year trajectory for the school. How you read uh, the chart, you have the, the table, you have uh, five years, one, two, three, four, five in uh, columns, and you have the cash balance basically at the opening on the top, at the, at the end of each year in the, in the middle, bottom. And in, in between, you have uh, outflows and inflows. So basically, we start at 180, which is uh, on the top left-hand side of your slide, which is the, 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 the cash balance uh, now, basically. We have the loan that will come to 185. Then we have the EBITDA, 
which is a positive 32 that's the budget that uh, Catherine mentioned just earlier. And then we have the different investment that we are projecting. We have significant investment. We have TKO, on which we still owe 80. We have Jardin uh, Lookout renovation that will be 15, then 50, 50. We have Bluepool Road renovation that is a total of 30 million over a few years. We have some investment in Taiwan and other IT uh, items. All this brings you to the cash balance at the end of each year. If you look at this slide, so basically the, the, the few messages that we want to pass is we are targeting a, an EBITDA of 32 million or cash flow. EBITDA cash flow are very similar, so cash flow of 32 million next year. And then we are targeting 50 million to go back to revert to 50 million, which is our satisfactory level on the long run. With this and the investments that we will make, we end up after five years with a cash balance which is similar to what we have today, 238. So the, the summary of this slide is we have significant investment to make in the buildings, which actually are in line with the 50 million EBITDA. So we can afford to have uh, last year and uh, this year and next year EBITDA slightly below, around 30-ish million, but at some point, we cannot uh, afford to have that for too long and we'll have to revert to 50 million. So that goes back to how much subsidy we can provide, how, how much grant we can provide. I think we are limited in, in the amount of efforts that uh, can be done ultimately. And again, we are a non-profit uh, organization, so we have to uh, maintain uh, good financial health. And that's it for the financial part. Catherine, Thomas, thank you very much for this uh, comprehensive uh, presentation. Um, we will come back to this, uh, to this ahead of the AGM as we will share documents uh, ahead of the AGM. I will announce that uh, later. Um, another important project um, uh, which is uh, linked with the transition to partnership was the um, how we how our governance uh, evolve under this uh, new framework. Uh, so Caroline Simon-Michel, who has been instrumental to lead uh, the governance committee over the last year, will share with us uh, uh, the following update on this topic. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you, Guillaume. Thank you, Guillaume. So uh, my name is uh, Caroline Simon-Michel. I have been a board member since uh, 2017, and I am the chair of the governance committee. So the governance uh, committee, uh, uh, which member you can see uh, on screen, uh, which includes a board member, a parent volunteer, and a, a, a school staff. Uh, you can see the composition, you can see the agenda of what we're going to talk about tonight. But uh, before we dive in and discuss governance, let's go and take a step back. What is governance? You can see the definition here on screen. Uh, very simply, governance is about the decision-making process. So who makes decisions, uh, which decisions, and uh, how? And why do we uh, want to reform the governance of the school right now? Uh, some of you might think, well, it's not really uh, uh, the subject for now. It's not what is uh, top of uh, uh, people's mind. Uh, what is on top of people's mind, it's uh, school fees, it's uh, resumption, and, and we've addressed that. Uh, but as our uh, chairman explained just before, the role of the board, uh, it's also to lay the foundation for the school to operate effectively uh, in the long term. So this is really what the governance reform is about. It's also uh, a commitment uh, that we, uh, we took uh, two, years ago, two years ago as a board when uh, the community voted uh, to move towards partnership with the UFA and uh, to select um, uh, their own uh, head of school. The objective uh, of this, uh, governance, uh, this governance reform is, is really twofold. Uh, one is to ensure that we uh, indeed have the framework to operate effectively under the new model, uh, and also uh, adapt to the increased complexity of the school. The previous model had been designed in the context of a much smaller school, uh, and also uh, operating under uh, IOFA convention. 
So together with the governance committee, we've been working uh, on a reform in uh, two phases. Uh, before I, I dive into that, I would just like to remind you that uh, as an association uh, in Hong Kong, we've got uh, two big uh, set of uh, legal documents uh, which um, define the way we operate. So two uh, types of documents for our governance. The first one is uh, the Article of Associations, which are voted by members. So members, uh, uh, parents uh, with individual um, debentures uh, or uh, representative of the corporate debenture. And we have bylaws, uh, bylaws which are voted by the board and which are uh, typically changed more regularly uh, and only require a vote, um, a, a vote by the board. So what we decided uh, is uh, to focus phase one on the changes which could be achieved uh, through a change of, uh, of the bylaws uh, and then uh, um, include in phase two uh, the changes which required a change of the article of association and therefore a vote um, uh, of uh, the whole community. So where do we stand now? Now uh, we've completed uh, phase one. Last year, uh, if you uh, attended the uh, AGM, we presented the change that we were considering. Uh, following this presentation and a number of um, uh, adjustments that we, uh, that we made, we voted the bylaws in August and they became applicable uh, in September. They are available, uh, if you wish to uh, read through uh, the, the details of the bylaws, uh, they are available on the parent portal. Um, let me just uh, summarize in a nutshell the, uh, the, the, the key changes of, um, the key areas of changes. Uh, and you will see that uh, you, you, you will find some of the uh, elements that were mentioned by, uh, by Guillaume, by your chairman, uh, because the school has already started uh, operating under these new bylaws. So first, there is a section on the head of school recruitment. Uh, under partnership, we're appointing the head of school. So uh, there is a section to organize this, uh, uh, the search committee. Uh, and uh, Goran will speak about that later. Then uh, we have a section on the uh, respective roles and responsibilities of the board versus the head of school. So these roles have been uh, redefined and uh, clearly uh, delineated. Uh, the idea is for the board to uh, continue to move away from executive or operational responsibilities and focus on the long term, long term orientation, as well as uh, general oversight uh, of the school. Uh, you can see on screen the, um, the uh, statement of role of responsibilities for, uh, for the board, um, which uh, focus on uh, long term and, and, and oversight. Um, this means that there is a general delegation of authority uh, to the head of school uh, who is uh, fully empowered to uh, cover all operational and uh, executive responsibilities. So we, we thought it was uh, important uh, to have this uh, bylaw fully operational uh, to uh, uh, operate this year, uh, but also in the context of uh, the recruitment of, uh, of a new head of school, uh, uh, to clearly uh, send the message to a potential candidate uh, that if they, if they join uh, FIS, they will be uh, fully, fully empowered. Uh, the third point is the reorganization of the committee. Uh, Guillaume presented the, uh, the committee. Um, these committees are fully aligned with the uh, new uh, responsibilities of the board. So each committee corresponds to uh, uh, an, an area of uh, responsibility. You will see, uh, we'll present... Um, Later, but we have a committee focused on uh, the long-term strategic plan. Um, we have a committee focused on uh, uh, looking at uh, risk and, and, and compliance. The fourth point is uh, the creation, the possibility of having independent directors. So we, we, uh, we elect parents, but uh, we can have other individuals who are experts, um, who have specific expertise who can stand for election. Uh, we also have a commitment to diversity and uh, a section on uh, the dialogue, dialogue of, um, of uh, parents, uh, pedagogical teams, and uh, uh, management. So what is the, the next step? The next step is uh, phase two, and the next step is uh, in progress. Uh, it's uh, uh, focused on uh, uh, everything which uh, requires a change in our article of association. 
And uh, the main uh, change that we're considering uh, and that we want to, uh, um, to uh, lay out uh, today is uh, the uh, composition of the board. So the composition of the board today, uh, we, we, it includes the Consul uh, General of France in Hong Kong and Macao, as well as uh, two elect 12 elected parents, uh, which are elected by all the bench holders uh, in uh, an annual general meeting uh, every year. And uh, we don't want to change that. So uh, we don't want to, uh, to change uh, the um, uh, participation of parents or the way they are elected. What we are proposing is to add uh, three, um, um, to have three of the board members uh, elected solely by the corporate debenture holder and uh, chosen among their staff. We are still uh, discussing whether it should be three in addition to the 12 or if the 12, uh, the number of 12 should be reduced to nine uh, and, and the three uh, will replace uh, um, uh, some of the parents. So <clears throat> why are we uh, suggesting to have corporate appointees uh, on the board? What is uh, the rationale? Uh, there are five key reasons. First, it's uh, continuity of direction. The length of the parents' director's engagement uh, with the school is variable. Uh, it depends on the evolution of um, everybody's personal uh, um, circumstances. So people might leave Hong Kong, they might have uh, less time to dedicate uh, to the school. And, uh, and, and, and these changes, they do not necessarily uh, follow a predictable pattern. So, when you think about it theoretically with a three-year mandate uh, and some of the board members uh, deciding to do a, a second one, uh, you, you, you will have a change of 20, 25% of uh, the board every year. But in practice, uh, in practice uh, we've had a situation in the past where 80% of the board uh, changed in, uh, in the space of uh, only a few months. And this has been uh, extremely dis disruptive for, uh, for the board and for the work of the board and for the school in, in, in general. Having uh, corporate appointees, uh, we believe, uh, coming from corporates who, are, uh, um, who have been involved with the school for, uh, for a long time or who plan uh, to be involved uh, uh, with the school uh, in the future, we believe uh, will foster continuity and, and will facilitate handover between uh, board members. The second reason is uh, because corporate appointees uh, could offer a complement uh, in terms of professional expertise. They could help ensure that uh, overall uh, we have the required expertise among board, member, board members. Uh, typically, the board needs expertise in uh, a lot of different areas, uh, finance, uh, legal, uh, HR, planning, risk, etc. And while existing board members try to promote uh, interest and candidacies among people uh, who have these skills, uh, uh, ultimately, the, 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 the parents, the debenture holder, uh, uh, choose. And uh, the parents with the most vote uh, get elected, which, uh, which is perfectly fine and it's not something that we want to change. But uh, it might result in an imbalance uh, in terms of the skills which are present on the board. So having corporate appointees elected uh, in a meeting uh, organized uh, separately after uh, the election of the uh, parent board member, uh, it could help solve that uh, imbalance, uh, allowing corporate to um, uh, volunteer staff from their rank uh, with the skills which would be complementary. The third reason is that, uh, that we believe it could help with uh, governance best practice. So as elected parents, we come from different backgrounds. We don't necessarily have experience working on board or with boards. Uh, having uh, board members with that experience uh, uh, will benefit uh, the, the, the whole board. The fourth reason is that um, we believe that the participation to the board uh, could increase awareness among corporates of the context of the school. And that's uh, also important. Um, corporates represent an, an important anchor uh, for the school including uh, a financial anchor. And finally, uh, generally speaking, having directors who might, be, uh, who might not be parents uh, might bring uh, 
uh, a diversity of perspective. So what is the timeline and next steps? Uh, um, we have started to reach out to, uh, to uh, corporates uh, to uh, discuss their interest and support uh, um, with some uh, positive feedback. We want to continue to do so over the next two months. Uh, we will also uh, meet with different stakeholders in the community uh, to discuss and, and uh, collect feedback. Following this feedback, uh, we will adjust the wording of the uh, article of association. We'll make a proposal. The objective will be uh, to table a modification of the article of association for an extraordinary general meeting in September or October. And uh, if voted, the modification will need to be uh, approved by different um, government bodies. So we will be targeting an implementation uh, around uh, the spring of uh, 2022. So this is the end of uh, my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Caroline, for this uh, for this presentation. Uh, maybe you can pass over there. Uh, it, it is a it is a key topic, and our school is uh, in an ecosystem. Uh, having the corporates on board with the board is is something which is key for the the, the future and the long term sustainability of the school. Uh, we cannot be just uh, stand alone. Uh, we have to be close to. Uh, to the consulate, we have to be close to the French Chamber of Commerce, we have to be close to all groups of debenture holder. So uh, now it's about time to make an update on um, committee's work, and, and this will be uh, led by uh, Sonia uh, and Goran. Thank you so much. Good evening. I'm Sonia Pernad Argout. I'm part of the board since 2017, currently board secretary and chair of the audit committee. So the work of the board member is structured around committees that work on the specific scope in order to propose a recommendation to the board. The Article 2.3.2 of the bylaws revised last year specify permanent and ad hoc committees. We have just heard updates from finance, governance, and we will share with you now more information related to the long-term planning, audit, fundraising, and head of school search. So let's start with Goran. Thank you very much, Sonia. My name is Goran Kooner. I chair the um, search committee for the next head of school. As has previously been communicated to the community last year by way of a newsletter, this is one of the key uh, roles of uh, the board, one of the most important responsibilities of the board to hire the next head of uh, school and work has certainly continued in earnest. By way of introduction, I chair the uh, committee, working alongside me. You can see a plethora of names. What is of key note here is that we have two um, parent uh, representatives as well as two staff uh, representatives on the uh, committee. Our mission is simple. It's to deliver a final shortlist of the head of school candidates to the board by May 21. What we've done thus far is a uh, formal appointment of our search firm uh, and all the details uh, surrounding uh, what's already been done thus far can be found on the My LFIS uh, parent portal. Um, and indeed, for all further updates, this is the place to go. Um, we have worked on an amazing uh, effort um, earlier in the year which uh, brought Carney Sando to our school in a virtual visit where some 80 uh, various meetings with our uh, school stakeholders were arranged. Why? To help uh, create a, um, uh, an insight into the key themes of what the school's uh, strengths are, what our challenges are, and what I guess the ideal attributes being sought of the next uh, head of school. The reason we did that is to inform the creation of a position description. And I'm very pleased to announce that the position description is now um, near completion and will be shared with the community as of next week, again, on the My LFIS uh, parent portal. So in terms of um, where to from here and uh, what uh, awaits us over the uh, coming months, uh, Kani Sando have interviewed, initially interviewed, a staggering 186 viable candidates from across the globe. 
this certainly speaks very highly about the appeal of a school such as ours, which is widely recognised not just as being a flagship school within the IFA network, but also a school that, given its size and complexity, certainly is very attractive to uh, many uh, candidates across the world. We will be shortly um, receiving a long list presentation from uh, Kani Sando to the search committee um, in hopefully two weeks' time. The search committee will then uh, embark on the process of detailed interviews and present a finalist shortlist to the board by the end of May 21. These finalists uh, who will uh, be distilled from this uh, shortlist will then be announced by name to the uh, community and the various community interviews will then start taking place with an announcement that will be due sometime around September 21. There is very little straightforward in any complex search at the best of times and uh, I guess even less so in uh, one such as ours uh, in the grips of uh, an international health crisis. The pandemic certainly presents challenges and considerable complication to our processes, um, which we as a search committee are striving to overcome each day. This has called for exceptional responses and strenuous workloads to help overcome these constraints, as for example, what would have been straightforward in-person meetings in sort of town hall uh, formats become many cumbersome uh, online endeavours with smaller groups of uh, people. And we all appreciate and miss the value of in-person contact, especially in our schools. With quarantine rules likely to endure for the remainder of the year, this means that we will need to continue to not only meet virtually, but in every likelihood hire virtually as well. Uh, things such as school visits, uh, city tours, uh, spouse tours, you know, showing uh, prospective candidates what it's like to live in Hong Kong, what typical apartments look like, etc., will all need to be arranged virtually, um, calling for, I guess, an even greater uh, workload in what, is, uh, in what is already, I guess, a very significant volunteer undertaking. So all of this certainly doesn't just happen. Uh, it's through the dedication of volunteer efforts that makes all of this possible. And I'd like to extend a heartfelt thank you to my fellow committee members and a very special thank you to Crystal Kwong for her amazing work this last January in arranging these 80 odd uh, meetings within um, our uh, school ecosystem. So that's it for me. Um, work continues in earnest. And a reminder that, yes, whilst there will be some uh, newsletters obviously coming out for all the key milestones, for all the other updates, please visit the, uh, my LFIS uh, parent portal for uh, regular updates. Thank you. I'll take over uh, to go the three, the three committees left. The Long-Term Planning Committee was created this year. It's led by Hervé Romain. It's an important committee with 11 members, of which three are outside the school, bringing their expertise and insights. The mission of the Long-Term Planning is to deliver a five-year strategic plan with clear direction to strengthen the school attractiveness in a competitive environment. The work of the committee is well on track with the completion of a thorough analysis of Hong Kong International School's landscape, FIS positioning, and its strengths and weaknesses. The committee is now preparing the strategic plan to be finalized in May, including a detailed five-year financial forecast. The audit committee was also created this year to support the board in its mission to manage the school risks and make sure solid policies and procedures are implemented within the school framework. The committee main focus started with training and coaching to raise risk awareness within the school teams. Key risks were identified thanks to a strong engagement of the heads of admin departments. The next step now is to present prioritized key risks in order to define mitigation action and implement relevant controls. 
the last one, um, but not the, the least, the fundraising um, is a board ad hoc committee that was created this year, chaired by Jeanne Zaoklo. Thanks to her astounding energy, with the support of the school staff and the parents' community, FIS had its first online gala auction that raised funds for sustainable projects. The fundraising committee has started an action plan by identifying contacts for donations within the corporates, foundations, parents, and alumni. The next step is to benchmark all the school's best practices, multiply the application dossier to present our case to charities, foundations, and of course, drive a stronger engagement within our community. I'll cover also, um, to finish on a very positive note, about the coming campus maintenance. Jardine's Lookout will be a completely new look. The renovation will be done in three phases over three years. The works will be carried out during weekends and holidays to avoid any disturbance during the teaching time. Jardine's will undergo a complete renovation of all parts, from classrooms to sports facilities, playgrounds to canteens. The pedagogical team was involved in the design, inspired by TKO spaces with open classroom to enable collaboration and shared projects. The multimedia features will also be upgraded. Blue Pool Road Campus will also go, go through um, a refurbishing, starting this year with the gymnasium facade. The well-being of the staff and the students is at the heart of this project, giving a special attention to lightning and acoustics in classrooms and corridors. The multimedia will also be enhanced. So more than ever, despite the extremely challenging times, we as a board must remain focused on securing the school's future. That is the end of the presentation and we'll carry on with the Q&A sessions. Um, just a few words, I want to thank Florence Head, the, the, Florence Head, the head of uh, marketing and admission, as well as Anne Van Lees, board member, which are at uh, the, the back uh, dealing with the questions. So we will try to answer as much question as we can in 30 minutes. If you wish to address a question to uh, someone specific, please, uh, start um, with the name and we will redirect to the person. All right, so I guess we're ready for the first question. Why not adjusting the school calendar for campus, especially Chen Kwano? I'll take this one. Um, there's an obvious reason for not having uh, doing it. Uh, that's typically the role of the head of school uh, with the Conseil d'établissement, Victor Segalen. And this question has been discussed with the, the, the parent reps and then shared with the with the summary. Uh, this, is mainly because, uh, this is mainly because of the holiday. Uh, this is not really the field of the board, so I won't go uh, further, but uh, um, parent reps are able to, to provide this answer. But this has been definitely uh, studied, and a proper answer have been, uh, have been provided and, and shared uh, in accordance with, uh, with the parent reps. Okay, thank you, Guillaume. Next question. Why is the long-term objective of the French International School more students, no matter in which stream, or keeping the French stream as most important to maintain a certain French identity? Guillaume, do you also want to take yes, this the, very interesting one? This, this, this is a very interesting topic, uh, and this is a very interesting topic uh, question. Um, we, we, that's something we can discuss for, for hours. What is the good balance between French stream and international stream? Uh, the main question today is how do we uh, find ways to uh, uh, continue under the partnership framework to make the, the French stream attractive and to, and to keep this balance? Uh, today, we can see from the figures 
that uh, if we remain only uh, French school focusing on just uh, the, the, the French stream, um, our school uh, will, the, the financial trajectory of, of, of our school is in danger as uh, before we would be able to uh, close one, one of the campus. Um, it's, it's not because we are losing 100 kids a year or, or so uh, in the French room that we will be able to make a huge shaving. So uh, the reality is there. Uh, we, we are operating in, in, in a competitive environment. Uh, um, the, the, the figures are evolving. Um, the, the, the balance has been higher for the, for the French room during, uh, during several years. As, as a French school and as the French identity and all the effort we put to make sure that the, the French stream is attractive and that was uh, that was one of the main uh, goal of the of, of moving to partnership is to uh, to, to make the the French stream competitive uh, in in such a competitive environment in Hong Kong with international school we, which is quite uh, um, not unique but uh, which is what happened here. Uh, that, that, that's, the, that's the reason why the figures are evolving, but we, we hope to maintain, uh, and that's a, uh, the, the wish of the board, to maintain a very strong French stream, uh, mm -hmm. uh, knowing that the, our international stream is, is also very important, and we have uh, great ambition as well for the international stream. Thank you. So next question. Can you please cl clarify why the school is subsidizing the transportation rather than reducing further the fees of the children who have suffered much from a low volume of face-to-face -face schooling? Half of the parents are paying the fees themselves. Yeah, um, but this one is, uh, in fact, if we do not subsidize uh, the transportation, uh, we won't be able to allow the, the students uh, to come back on campuses. So I think there is a strong will for all of us, uh, from the students, from the, from the teacher, from the, from the parents, to uh, come back on site. And uh, under the, the current circumstances, uh, to offer more time uh, time face to face for the student on site, uh, we must make adjustments in the, in the buses organization, particularly in San Quano. And uh, we've made the decision to, uh, to subsidize this. Uh, and, and it's to the benefit of the parents. Anyway. Thank you, Guillaume. So let's go for the main, main next question. May I ask, as many other companies, where are the budget savings done by negotiating with suppliers due to the shutdown of the school, such as cleaning, third party, non use, etc.? So I'll turn it to Thomas. Yeah, so I think. Uh I think we communicated on this one uh, quite significantly last year. Uh, there are indeed savings, and uh, Catherine and the teams have spent uh, quite a lot of time trying to make as much saving as possible. The reality is the biggest item on the school in terms of uh, finance, as you have seen in the, in the budget earlier, uh, is, is uh, salaries for staff, uh, which have not been reduced. Uh, we don't have costs for our buildings apart from renovation, so uh, it's, it's actually a small items. So everything that was uh, feasible has been done, and indeed we have had savings. If you, if you refer to communication that were sent, I think, quite extensively uh, in uh, June, July last year, and in the AGM of last year, I think it was detailed. All right, that's clear. Um, the next question is for governance. On governance, do you have examples from other schools with corporate appointees? Is it a successful model? What is Singapore French School doing? So I think we, we benchmark and exchange with Singapore School, right, uh, yes. Caroline? So uh, um, Singapore indeed is a, Singapore indeed is a, one of the models that uh, has uh, inspired uh, us in this uh, in this proposal, um, it's uh, indeed uh, 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 quite a successful model. Uh, the board in uh, the uh, Singaporean French school uh, is actually split uh, half um, corporate appointees and half um, parents, and uh, it has been uh, operating uh, well for uh, for many many years. Uh, some of the uh, 
of the uh, um, corporate executive uh, that we've had in, in Hong Kong uh, have actually had uh, some, uh, some experience in, um, in Singapore also um, being board member as, as, as corporate appointees. So it's uh, an experience which uh, definitely uh, we have studied uh, and, um, and which uh, inspired our, uh, our proposal. Okay, thank you, um, Caroline. The next question I'll direct it to Thomas. Can you give some update on the Fonds des Amis? I do not see it in your financial reports. Are people requesting this help, getting financial support? Uh, so yeah, I, I can uh, definitely answer to this one. So uh, yeah, we didn't. We we did a, a quick update on the financial report, so the, the purpose was to go through a few elements, but definitely we announced last year 5 million of allocation, so 5 million Hong Kong of allocation to the Fonds des Amis, which uh, as a reminder is, a, is a, a money that we, uh, we, with which we will uh, manage specific situations of, of parents or families, uh, and we will provide rebates on the fees on an ad hoc basis to those families that have a specific situation. So it's reviewed in a committee which uh, is not uh, the made of board members, but uh, of staff, and each situation is, is reviewed separately. We have, out of the 5 million, uh, we've had uh, 95 requests last year that, have, uh, that amounted for 2.3 million of uh, fee reduction in total between full fee reduction to 25%, depending on the situation. Uh, and, and this year, we've had another 23 requests that so far accounted for 0.8 million. So in total, we are still uh, left with some uh, money in this fund, but we are definitely planning on, on, on spending it. As an addition, just a, a detail, uh, we also have the capacity, and uh, it's something that you need to discuss with the finance, uh, fin finance department in case of need. We have the capacity to do installment. So it's not a fee reduction. Uh, it's not a, an official gift in terms of fee reduction, but it's a, it's a planning on the payment of fees. Definitely the school prefers that than uh, simply being late and not communicating. And we had uh, 109 installment granted last year and 106 this year, so it's really something that we do and, and we are actually very uh, comfortable with helping situations that are specific. All right, so the next question is for Goran. How difficult is it to find the right candidate for the head of school? Are you confident? So I'll answer that question by saying it is extremely difficult uh, to find the right candidate for our school. Uh, as Guillaume touched on earlier at the uh, very beginning of our uh, webinar, uh, even the IFR acknowledge us to be in a special category of uh, difficulty. So yes, it's extremely difficult to find uh, the right candidate. So that's why we, uh, as a board, uh, initially and now as a search committee, worked strenuously hard to identify a search partner that had the right credentials and the right level of global reach by which to be able to cast as wide a net as possible to distill our very demanding requirements for our next head of school. How confident am I? Uh, I'm quietly confident. Um, we have appointed a leading global search firm uh, in this endeavor, and uh, certainly the discussions that uh, we've engaged in uh, bring me a great measure of uh, comfort moving forward. So, quite confident. Very good, Goran. Um, I see the next question is uh, also for you. Um, is the recruitment of the next head of school including screening of local profiles. It would lower significantly the risk of recruitment that you mentioned, enable face-to-face -face interview, knowledge of what is Hong Kong today, etc. They are great education experts in Hong Kong. Yeah, that's a great question. I would certainly not disagree. There are indeed great uh, education experts uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, let me just say this, that at FIS we remain steadfastly uh, an equal opportunity 
uh, an inclusive uh, employer. So given that this is a global search, of course it ne necessarily uh, encompasses the, uh, the geography uh, of Hong Kong. We don't exclude Hong Kong, but we don't limit ourselves to Hong Kong either. Serving the school's best interests here calls for indeed a global search. And that of course is absolutely inclusive of uh, Hong Kong and I absolutely concur with regards to uh, the caliber of talent that is available locally. All right. Um, so the next question, has postponing the renovation works has been considered? Um, I will cover it as I uh, presented uh, the coming renovation work, work. And I actually asked the same question. And, and the, wor the renovation works were already postponed. Um, it has been uh, on hold for uh, quite some time. So that's why it was decided uh, to resume and go ahead um, as we discuss, it's uh, very important for the attractiveness of the school in a Hong Kong competitive environment. The next question. Is the rebate for full school year? Um, so I, maybe I was not clear. So the, the rebate is a, is a one-off on, uh, on term two fees. All the rebates are one of on, on term two fees that is applied to term three and, and lead to the amount that uh, I have, uh, uh, we provided on the slide, so uh, in excess of six million. We, I mean, uh, by definition, if we were to do this on a full school year, it would be the triple of the amount and, and would uh, generate a significant reduction in the EBITDA and, and a significant loss on the school. So it was decided not to do it uh, at this stage. So back to my answer, why not more? Uh, so sadly, we, we, we have to maintain a balance on, on the finance side. For two years in a row, uh, FIS and, and, and its board has made the decision to not raise the school fee. And in a way, not raising the school fee is also a way uh, to, 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 secure, um, to secure rebate on, on, on what is happening in other schools. I know that not all the schools are increasing the school fees, but some, some of our competitors are still increasing the school fee in, in this situation. And we are making our best effort at the board to keep um, our school fees affordable. And that was uh, also one of the, 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 the strong um, determinants of, uh, I don't know, of the key, key, key idea of, uh, of this year budget to uh, maintain the school fee uh, flat in order to give back to the community as well. OK, um, next question. Um, where is the cost from COVID testing from? My understanding is that it is free with Hong Kong government. So this is a more operational question, but you want to cover it? Yeah, we, we, we can cover it. We, we have to make it smooth for our staff. Uh, if we want to make it work, uh, uh, we should not say uh, to, to our staff, uh, go uh, wherever you, you, you want. We have to organize it to make it a smooth process. So uh, uh, we, we manage uh, with the help of uh, Catherine Department to, to get very good condition, uh, to manage it uh, smoothly uh, uh, until the end of the year. Uh, the situation evolves. We don't know if we will have to go far, uh, to go that far. So the, the, the budget you've seen is, is, is a provision and, and we will see, but uh, we, we cannot ask our staff to uh, go by themselves uh, uh, testing and it's, uh, it, it's an organization, it will, uh, the provider will, will give all the results that we have to give to EDB. So it's, it's a strict organization and uh, having a provider uh, is, is really uh, safeguarding the, 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 the prevention process. All right, um, the next one, could TKO in the future open the lycée? Uh, I mean, we, the, the design of, of the school is primary. Uh, the, the primary building is designed with, uh, with area for, for, for primary students. And we have a, a college of a reasonable size. Uh, it's uh, only uh, three class per, per level for four, level, for four levels. Um, is it possible? It's, it's not impossible. Does it make sense? Uh, I'm, I'm not so sure at this stage. That's something that will be uh, covered depending the, the evolution of our offer, depending the, the, the evolution of our uh, student enrollment and the evolution of the strategic plan. But for now, there is no plan to, to open Lycée and there's no room to open Lycée 
uh, in, in Tsongkwano. All right, thank you. Um, Goran, uh, next question for you. Give a little bit more details on the responsibility of the headmaster. So I'll read the question. Will the next head of school have the same responsibilities than Mr. Gabe, who was hired as a head of transition only? Uh, right, so to clarify, uh, Monsieur Gabe was brought in uh, to lead the transition uh, for one year during our uh, final year of the Convention. Uh, now that we're in partnership, uh, Monsieur Gabe uh, is the interim head of the school. There would be no differentiation or distinction in terms of the mission or the position description between what Monsieur Gabe is doing at present and our next head of school will be charged with doing. What would differ, obviously, would be the nature of the uh, transformation work that uh, is required moving forward, and that has already been elucidated by way of our uh, projet d'établissement. Um, so to answer your question, uh, the current mandate of our interim head of school remains intact and identical to the mandate and mission of our next incoming head of school the transformation agenda of that next head of school obviously may differ. Okay, thank you. Um, Guillaume or Caroline, for you the next question. What can we expect by getting closer to corporates? What benefits can the school expect from it? So as, as I explained, uh, I, I, I gave a different um, elements on uh, why, uh, what was a rationale to uh, um, uh, to suggest uh, corporate appointees on the board. Uh, all this rationale uh, go uh, in the same direction, which is uh, making the board more effective. And by making the board and the governance of the school uh, more effective, uh, it should benefit the whole school. So that's the, uh, the, the general uh, idea uh, that we could uh, benefit from, uh, from the expertise, uh, from, uh, from the stability uh, that the corporate uh, can uh, can offer from the experience uh, working on boards uh, to uh, reinforce uh, our, our governance and the efficiency of, uh, of, of, the, uh, of the board. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, some more questions coming up. Um, Thomas, can you explain why the TKO1 grant for TKO will be borne by TKO legal entity. Does it mean that fees might increase later due to the different financial situations? This is not the case for MS year one grant. So it's actually, it's, uh, uh, we wanted to present you how the subsidy are used. So we showed uh, you the details of the, the accounting that we do. Ultimately, the, the reason behind the, the TKO grant being borne by the TKO entity is because TKO has a special treatment whereby we provision part of the fees every year and we, we, have, we can use it. Uh, the, the, but the fees globally for the school are kept at the global level. So it has no impact on the, on the, in the future on whether TKO will have uh, higher fees or not higher fees. Uh, ultimately, the, the decision of the fees and the fact we decided not to increase the fees for the second year in the row is, is collective. And we have no plan whatsoever to change this and to have fees that depend on, on campus. All right, time is running. Um, we'll take the last questions. Uh, the next one. Considering the budgeted loss and the increased OPEX, will we have a significant increase of fees? Uh, so, I mean, uh, I, I, I think there was a big debate two years ago when we, we moved to partnership about significant increase of fees. I think two years in a row of no fee increase is a proof that the transition has not generated a, a, a significant increase of fees or of costs. The reality is we have two years where we have had a, a specific situations and I don't think the finance are stable at the time. So we have accepted to have two years at 30 million cash flow per year, 30 million EBITDA, which is slightly below where we want to be. Hopefully we'll be able to get there. Uh, it's, a, it's a mix of uh, parameters. Uh, one is return to normal. 
uh, which will help. The second one is number of kids in the school. We have a campus that is uh, designed for two, uh, 2,700 kids, uh, ideally and more. So we are really at the border. So ideal, the ideal world would be more kids, and then definitely the financial matter would not happen. Whether at some point we need to marginally increase fees uh, to, to, to go back to equilibrium or to, the, to where we want to be, I'm, I'm not at all guaranteeing that it will never happen. Is it a substantial increase of fees? Certainly not. But yeah, yeah probably if, if you want uh, truly, uh, maybe we are a few persons below where we should be to, to be totally, uh, totally fine. And that's why uh, uh, we've, we've, uh, we've discussed about increasing fees and decided not to do it because the period is not right. But, uh, what, what happens in the future, I, I don't know. But a big gap, cl clearly not. Right, so um, um, Thomas, I think you've given um, explanation, but I see the question coming up. Um, so can you confirm that all government subsidiaries have been given back to the parents? So in a, in a way or another, yes. Uh, so I, I detailed earlier uh, how they have been allocated. So that everything has been given back in reduction of fees, no. The answer is no. Some has been given back in improvements. Some have been given back in just paying for, for costs that are coming from the situation. Uh, uh, we, but ultimately, again, the school is non-profit. So whatever comes in uh, goes out, and we are not making like a big uh, a treasure that we will use in the future. We are barely uh, break-even, and we try to run at the reasonable uh, amount of cash. So ultimately, yes, I, I think in a way or another, it's been given back. Uh, somehow to the parents. All right. Thank you. And we'll take uh, the last question. What is the role of CVS? What kind of questions can be submitted to the CVS? So uh, CVS, uh, Conseil Victor Segalen, is, um, uh, is the, the school uh, console. It's, uh, uh, it's an instance, a body which um, uh, is supposed to uh, facilitate uh, the uh, dialogue uh, between uh, school management, uh, staff representative, uh, uh, including teachers and uh, parents and students. Um, the, the, uh, the CVS has existed uh, in this school for, uh, for, for, for many years. So, uh, it's something which is uh, required uh, under the French uh, homologation. Uh, there are very spe specific rules uh, which uh, describe um, the uh, specific competencies of the CVS. So uh, the CVS uh, uh, approves, uh, for example, the uh, projet d'établissement, uh, which is presented by the head of school. The, the CVS approves uh, the calendar. Uh, and then the CVS uh, can discuss uh, a, a number of uh, other questions uh, without uh, necessarily um, uh, a, a, deciding, uh, a deciding power. So in short, uh, it's uh, an instance of discussion uh, uh, with um, a few specific uh, areas uh, where, where uh, it has uh, decision-making power. All right, thank you. So we'll close this uh, Q&A session. Uh, Guillaume, for yeah, your closing thank, words. Thank, thank you for all this. Uh, sorry, I'm just get, trying to get rid of my face mask. Uh, thank you all for so, so many uh, interesting questions. Uh, we've reached the, the end of this webinar. Uh, I realized that it was a huge amount of uh, information. Uh, we hope we provide a good level of information, not in, in details, not too much in details, and you were able to uh, un understand the, the, the key point, and, we, and also we managed to, to, to answer your question. Um, despite the fact that board members are on a voluntary basis, uh, I would like to confirm uh, the full commitments of uh, my fellow board members to our school and to its community. In the context of this health crisis, maybe some of you wonder what, 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 have, they, uh, what, have, what have they done? And in fact, we have taken numerous actions to defend, to defend the interest of our children uh, on top of the regular board work. Board work. Uh, we maintain close 
close relation with the, the Consul General, obviously, uh, but also the French Chamber of Commerce, uh, some, some other company, and any related stakeholders such as uh, other international school, in order, for example, to align our request toward the local administration. So we, as a board, we defend, uh, by ourselves, certain demand directly with, with, with the ADB, with who also we, we interact. And uh, no later than yesterday, uh, we obtain an agreement in principle from the AFF Asia Pacific Aid for another significant financial gesture in favor, in favor of FIS. Uh, but even if we try, our school will not be able to offset all the burden generated by COVID-19. The board alongside with the school management uh, is managing this crisis since the beginning uh, around three key words. Uh, those words are solidarity, unity, and support. So I renew uh, this call tonight. Uh, uh, as it has been explained, uh, um, FIS is, is a non-profit organization. Uh, the school is ours. It's important to, to keep in mind that the school is ours, but we all share the same interest. So maybe sometimes we can have different view, but we all share the same interest in the end. In this difficult time, we need to stand strong for each other and for our staff, uh, who despite uh, many fall pressures, continue to inspire our children. Finally, uh, I, have to, I have chosen, if uh, we may have the slide, uh, um, I have the, the latest slide, uh, I have chosen to illustrate this conclusion with uh, the five petals of our logo and our vision, uh, so that despite all the recent downs, we can be united around our common values. Thanks for watching this webinar. Uh, replay will soon be available if you miss uh, part of it. Uh, thanks for those who help uh, to organize this and thanks for those who also uh, have been participating to this webinar and for your contribution along the year. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on the 13th of May for our next AGM. Uh, it may be happen once again uh, via a screen. Uh, je vous souhaite une bonne soirée à tous. Merci de votre attention. Merci de votre soutien. Et une journée en avance, on vous souhaite de très bonnes vacances. À bientôt. Merci.